The Iron Man came to the top of the cliff. How far had he walked? Nobody knows. Where had he come from? Nobody knows. How was he made? Nobody knows. Taller than a house, the Iron Man stood at the top of a cliff on the very brink in the darkness. The wind sang through his iron fingers. His great iron head, shaped like a dustbin but as big as a bedroom, slowly turned to the right, slowly turned to the left. His iron ears turned this way, that way. He was hearing the sea. His eyes, like headlamps, glowed white, then red, then infrared, searching the sea. Never before had the Iron Man seen the sea. He swayed in the strong wind that pressed against his back. He swayed forward on the brink of the high cliff. And his right foot, his enormous iron right foot, lifted up, out, into space. And the Iron Man stepped forward off the cliff into nothingness. Crash! Down the cliff, the Iron Man came toppling head over heels. Crash! 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 From rock to rock, snag to snag, tumbling slowly. And as he crashed and crashed and crashed, his iron legs fell off, his iron arms broke off, and the hands broke off the arms. His great iron ears fell off, and his eyes fell out. His great iron head fell off. All the separate pieces tumbled, scattered, crashing, bumping, clanging, down onto the rocky beach far below. A few rocks tumbled with him. Then, silence. Only the sound of the sea chewing away at the edge of the rocky beach, where the bits and pieces of the Iron Man lay scattered far and wide, silent and unmoving. Only one of the Iron Hands, lying beside an old, sand-logged, washed-up seaman's boot, waved its fingers for a minute, like a crab on its back. Then it lay still. While the stars went on wheeling through the sky, and the wind went on tugging at the grass on the cliff top, and the sea went on boiling and booming. Nobody knew the Iron Man had fallen. 